Throughout its history, Japan has had many different capital cities which moved according to the political uncertainties of the times. Nara was the country's first imperial city in the year 710. Then, in 784, Kyoto took over until the 19th century when Tokyo became the capital. The capital cities were the seat of military and political power as well as religious power. First Shintoist, then Buddhist, the religious authorities erected many monuments in these cities, especially since each faith engendered many dissident branches over time. Nara was the first capital of Japan between 710 and 784. Prior to that, the capitals were moved from kingdom to kingdom because, according to the ancient beliefs of Shintoism, death constituted the most serious impurity. And the death of a ruler meant that impurity struck the entire capital. So the palaces had to be destroyed and built elsewhere. In the early 8th century, the Japanese understood that they had to create a more durable center for government and state administration. So they established their capital here, especially since Buddhism had appeared in the archipelago, creating new needs. The historical monuments of ancient Nara are among the most ancient in Japan, and they have been on UNESCO's World Heritage List since 1998. In the city center, Kofukuji Temple is accessed by a staircase that leads to a small octagonal pavilion. It was built on the north side of the main building in 721 and it was rebuilt 700 years later. In the park, as well as throughout the city, deer roam free in peace and quiet. In Shinto religion, deer are considered the messenger of the gods. According to legend, a divinity seated on a winged white buck landed close to here to ensure the protection of the newly built imperial city. Since then, deer are considered as divine animals, protectors of Nara and of all of Japan. Until 1637, anyone who killed a deer was condemned to death. Today, there are more than 1,000 deer in Nara that beg tourists for food. In Japanese Buddhist temples, there are three main buildings. The pagoda, generally three to five floors, which is absent in Zen Buddhism. The main building, called Kondo, literally Golden Hall, which was sometimes linked to the pagoda by a cloister called Cairo. Kofukuji Temple was built in the first days of the new capital. Its five-story pagoda, created according to the wishes of the wife of Emperor Shomu, rises over 50 meters high, making it one of the tallest pagodas of Japan. Another octagonal structure completes the religious complex. At the time of Nara, Chinese civilization had a great influence over Japan. Thus, the administration modeled itself after the vast centralized and powerful Chinese bureaucracy. The same went for religion, and Buddhism flourished in the archipelago. It was a time during which the great constructions of Buddhist temples became widespread. These great temples had a very big impact on the population, who saw in this new religion a source of powerful protection for the country. As soon as it was founded during the Nara period, Todaiji, literally the Great Temple of the East, served to concentrate the different Buddhist sects of Japan. Within its surrounding wall stands the largest wooden construction in the world, Daibutsu Den, the Hall of the Great Buddha. Its entrance is protected by frightening celestial guardians. 
Inside stands a huge bronze statue of the Buddha, the Enlightened One, rising 15 meters high. It displays the most sophisticated head of sculpted hair in the archipelago, with more than 100 bronze hair curls. The right hand is raised in a sign of appeasement. Beside the Buddha, the two wooden gilded bodhisattvas are meant to help reach enlightenment. Outside, a statue of the prophet dissipates all ills if you rub it before leaving. Throughout this temple and up to the exit, monumentality is truly emphasized. Fourteen kilometers south of Nara is Horiyoji, literally, the temple of the flourishing law. It is a part of the monuments built in the seventh century, and it is among the oldest wooden buildings existing in the world. These architectural masterpieces marked an important point in the history of art. They illustrate the adaptation of Chinese Buddhist architecture in Japanese culture. Here, too, the Neos guard the entrance to the temple. The one with an open mouth represents the expression of power, while the one with a closed mouth symbolizes latent power. The most ancient buildings of the religious complex after the gate are the Kondo and the five-story pagoda. The temple's main building is the sacred edifice, which contains the statues of the Buddha. Entrance is strictly prohibited. Contrary to China, in Japan, pagodas are made of wood and built around a shinbashira. It's a thick central pillar that ensures the stability of the monument despite earthquakes. Multi-storied without a staircase, built on a pedestal and topped by an arrow or a spike, they are displayed as artistic objects made to be admired. Pagodas are the most important structures in Buddhist temples for they hold the relics of the Buddha. The Kairo, a covered corridor that stretches east and west, surrounding the pagoda and the main building, is used like the cloisters of Western Christian pagodas. It has delicate, latticed windows. Within the temple's compound stands an octagonal structure, the oldest of its kind in Japan. It is the Pavilion of Dreams, which owes its name to a legend. The Prince of Nara saw a celestial nymph in his dreams and she enlightened him on the mystery of a sutra, the sutras being the texts of the teachings attributed to the Buddha. Inside, a statue of Bodhisattva has remained hidden for over a thousand years in order to preserve its power. On the other side of the compound stands the Pavilion of Studies, the Kodo. It was built for the monks who studied Buddhism. They followed teachings that insisted on the fact that there is no reality outside of thought, for the senses produce only illusions. Further away, a temple is devoted to the temple's founder, Prince Shotoku, who lived from 574 to 622. He promulgated the first national constitution of Japan, and he also made enormous efforts to promote the spread of Buddhism. But in Nara, religion became very omnipresent over time, and very constricting for the imperial government. Thus, he decided to leave the city and all its temples, and to move the capital to Kyoto. Kyoto is still one of the biggest cities of Japan, 
but it was first populated in the 7th century by the Hatta clan from Korea. The capital city became the seat of the imperial court in 794, and here, too, temples proliferated. But they did not interfere as much with the political and military power structures. Like the temples themselves, the gates of the temples in Japan are masterpieces because they give access to a sacred space. Igashi Onganji, or Eastern Temple of the Original Vow, was built in 1602 and entirely rebuilt in 1895 after a fire. Igashi Onganji is an active Buddhist temple that belongs to the sect of the Pure Land. The essence of this sect's doctrine is that salvation can be attained by singing praises to the Buddha in a wholly sincere manner. Its main hall is the greatest wooden structure in Kyoto. It is devoted to Shinran, the founder of the sect. As the decor of the site reveals, this branch of Buddhism was very wealthy and powerful. Confronted with the popularity of Pure Land, the authorities of the time worked to diminish it by dividing it. In the early 17th century, the shogun, or chief military commander, aggravated a doctrinal separation within the sect by donating lands to a dissident temple. In other words, he divided and conquered. Today, there are many branches of the Pure Land, but Higashi Hoganji has nonetheless remained one of the sect's dominant temples, both in Japan and abroad. Nestled between a canal and the Kamo River, a more lighthearted district amuses tourists who flock here to experience an atmosphere that is close to disappearing. Pontosho is the district of carelessness, a vagabondage and hypothetically voluptuous outings. The district comes to life only at the end of the day. This district was formerly known throughout the archipelago for its tea houses, in which the geishas and prostitutes practiced their arts. Geishas, called geikos in Kyoto, were cultured and sophisticated female entertainers. Though their role may seem ambiguous to Westerners, it is certain that geishas did not systematically grant sexual favors to their clients, nor were these favors taken for granted. Traditional Japanese architecture is particularly well represented and preserved in this district. The alleys of wooden houses crystallize the memory of a past time. But today, behind the sliding doors, the women of yesteryear have been replaced by barmen, stands, and all sorts of bistros, to the joy of the night owls seeking escape. At the water's edge, the restaurant terraces, lit up by lanterns, remain full during the warm season, and an air of festivities blows along the bank. Nijo Castle, initially built as a garrison, served as a temporary residence for the shoguns. It is made up of two rings of fortifications, both constituted of surrounding walls protected by a large moat. Tokugawa Ieyasu, the richest and most important shogun of Japan, named Generalissimo by the emperor, had it built in 1603. The term shogun means general as the head of the armed forces. It was occasionally a hereditary position. In fact, it designated the leader of Japan, since the country was a military dictatorship. As for the emperor, he was the guardian of traditions. Created in the 12th century, this title was abandoned in the 19th, once the emperor reclaimed his power. 
the castle is made up of two palaces, various buildings, and many gardens. It covers a surface area of 27 hectares, with buildings spanning over 8,000 square meters. In the center stands Honmaru Palace, divided into apartments and reception halls, all contained within its own garden. The pavilions of the second palace, Ninomaru, are also surrounded by a wall and moats with only two points of access. The palace was built in 1626 upon the emperor's visit. It is in this palace that the last shogun had to officially render power to the imperial authorities in 1867, putting an end to the shogunate. The double main gate, decorated in gold leaf, is on par with the social rank of the shogun, the master of the site. The palace is made entirely of Japanese cypress wood, and one of its characteristics is the nightingale floor that covers the corridors. It was built in such a way that the smallest step makes the wood floor creak, emitting a sound similar to a bird squeak. This floor thus served to detect all intruders and to prevent assassination attempts against the shogun and his guests. The gardens of Ninomaru are rather vast, Plum and cherry trees stand around a great basin with three islands and numerous stones, placed with great precision. They were designed in the 17th century by one of the greatest masters in this domain, Kobori Enshu. Nijo Castle and its two palaces display the wealth and power the shoguns had in the distant past of medieval Japan. Kyoto Gosho is the imperial palace of Kyoto, located in the city center, in a very big garden devoted to walks, also designed by Kobori Enshu. It was previously a district that sheltered prestigious residences belonging to the noble families of the court, but they were destroyed to make way for the park, which contains sprawling lawns and over 9,000 trees. It was converted into a public park after the capital was moved to Tokyo. The palace, occupied for nearly 1,000 years, occupies a rectangular surface area of 51 hectares. It is surrounded by an earthen wall that is 1.3 kilometers long and 700 meters wide. It contains nine entry gates. Each one corresponds to a rank of the royal nobility. The imposing Kenremon Gate with its cypress wood roof supported by four pillars was reserved for the emperor. The imperial palace served as the official residence of the emperor until 1868, the beginning of the Meiji era. That year, Tokyo became the new capital of Japan and the imperial court migrated to Edo Castle in order to establish its new residence. Kyoto Gosho then became a secondary residence for the imperial family. Inside the surrounding walls, a formal gate serves to delineate the imperial area. It gives out onto the Hall of Ceremonies, which was also the throne hall, 33 meters long and 23 meters wide. Many buildings serving precise purposes occupy the site. This one served as a waiting room for visitors. Three rooms were available according to the visitor's rank. Representations of Japanese herons are seen behind the sliding doors, the bird of joy that carried souls to paradise. 
A huge carriage entrance opens out onto the building where Emperor Taisho was crowned in 1915. The refreshing hall was built on the same model as the Hall of Ceremonies. It was used by the emperor to carry out his personal business. He sat in the center, surrounded by dignitaries and aristocrats. The room included an area for eating and sleeping. He could also be entertained in this courtyard. With his courtesans, he played a game called Kimari in which a deerskin ball had to be passed without falling to the ground. This took place before smiling courtesans who attended the scene. The very formal Kogosho is the building where the emperor would formally receive the shogun. Just opposite the building, a promenade garden surrounds a small artificial lake with a stone bridge. The Otsunigoten was the sovereign's true residence. It was the greatest structure within the palace compound. It included 15 rooms. Nobody was permitted to enter it. It contains pretty etchings that depict the clothing styles of the time. There are still many structures within the palace compound. One must stroll through the gardens to discover them. Here, a Shinto sanctuary. And there, a basin for ablutions. The basin was used to purify the hands and mouth before the ceremonies in accordance with Shinto tradition. In its totality, Kyoto Palace evokes the very regulated way of life at the emperor's court, the guarantor of a tradition in which every detail has a deep meaning. In the middle of its magnificent garden, Shoren Inn was previously the temple of the sovereign's abbot, who had to be chosen among the imperial family or the high aristocracy of the court. This Buddhist temple dates back to the late 13th century. After the Great Fire of Kyoto in 1788, it was even used as a temporary imperial palace until the palace was rebuilt. The interior is a true museum that retraces this era. The temple's complex opens out onto the 16th century promenade garden, which includes a waterfall and a gigantic camphor tree that is 800 years old. In Japan, gardens hold a true and very important purpose in the psychological balance of man. A garden is not meant to be looked at, it is contemplated. It is a part of a meditative process that recenters humans in the midst of nature. It is a demonstration of harmony, a balance between order and freedom. Maruyama Park likely represents the most famous site of Kyoto. The locals come here not to admire immobile ponds and colorful foliage, but to contemplate it. Though Kyoto is today a great modern city turned towards the future,
it still contains authentic districts like that of Gion, founded in the Middle Ages. The district was built to serve as a rest stop for travelers headed to the remote mountain sanctuaries. After having made their way through the small labyrinthine merchant streets and accomplished the hill's difficult ascent, they were rewarded with the intensely red details of Kiyomizu Temple's gate, which contrasts starkly with the immaculately white walls. The temple is in fact a complex of many Buddhist and Shintoist temples. A magnificent three-story pagoda welcomes the pilgrims. It is flanked to the east by the bell tower pavilion called the Shoro. It's a typically Buddhist construction on the same level as the pagoda. The temple's complex also contains many Shinto sanctuaries, one of which is devoted to the god of love and good encounters. Here, one can make the wish to have a child. But the highlight is without a doubt Kiyomitsu Temple, which dates back to 798, near the end of the Nara era. Rebuilt in 1633, it is one of the city's most famous sites. On a hillside, it has an impressive view over Kyoto. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The main building of Kiyomitsu Dera is famous for its platform, supported by hundreds of pillars, without a single screw used in the entire structure. Tradition has it that if someone survived after jumping from the temple's platform, his wish would come true. After many accidents, attempts have since been forbidden. The hundreds of Japanese who come here light a candle or an incense stick, requesting happiness and good health from the compassionate divinities. The rituals follow a very ancient branch of Buddhism originating from India. But the temple is a victim of its own popularity, and it is difficult to meditate peacefully here. In a quieter place, Sanju Sanjendo Temple was founded in 1164. The temple's room, 120 meters long, is the longest wooden structure in the world. This temple is famed for its 1001 gilded wooden statues sculpted in the 13th century. The 10 rows of 100 figures representing the goddess of compassion surround the great main statue. Each one can save 50 lives in the Buddhist universe. One of Kyoto's places of interest is this primitive forest that is said to have never been maintained and which is named Forest Where Lies Come to Light. At its center, a Shinto temple welcomes pilgrims with its traditional vermilion tori. The Shimogamo Jinja is one of the oldest Shinto sanctuaries of Japan. Shintoism, literally the path of the gods, is a religion that combines polytheistic and animist elements. It is the oldest religion in Japan and is particularly linked to the country's mythology. It was established before Buddhism was imported in the 6th century.
Its divinities, the Kamo Jinja, serve to protect Kyoto from malignant influences. They are associated with thunder. Today, this religion has more than 100 million followers in Japan, since many practice the two religions simultaneously, or in alternation, without any problem. In the past, custom had it that the entire Shimogamo Jinja should be destroyed, then rebuilt every 21 years, or upon the death of the emperor. This implied very high costs. Today, only a dozen or so Shinto constructions comply with this custom. Furthermore, since this temple was designated a national treasure and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the custom is now limited to the renovation of the site. The Maidono used to welcome visiting emperors. And today still, each year on May 15th, a historical parade takes place here. Kyotoites come in droves, nearly as much as for the new year. In Japan, the creation of gardens is an important and respected art. It seeks to interpret and idealize nature while limiting artifice. Some of the best known gardens are dry gardens or Zen gardens, made up of rocks, moss, and gravel. Originating from ancient Japanese tradition, they are found in private homes, city parks, and temples. This type of garden surrounds the Ginkaku-ji, the temple of the Silver Pavilion, which is a Zen Buddhist temple. It was built in 1482 as a retreat for solitude and peace for the Shogun Yoshimasa. As the war intensified and reduced Kyoto to ashes, he retreated to his villa. It is said that he sat in the pavilion, contemplating the peace and beauty of the gardens. His goal was to cover the pavilion in silver, but due to the intensification of the war, construction was halted, and the pavilion was never covered with the precious metal. In the end, the building that was meant to be an ostentatious monument is now seen as an example of refined simplicity. As we can see, nature is very important in Japanese culture. Not far from here, on the wooded hills of the former capital, the philosopher's path is a pedestrian path that follows a canal lined with cherry trees. The path was thus named because the famous Japanese philosopher of the 20th century, Kitaro Nishida, used it for his daily meditation. The founder of the Kyoto School, he sought to link Western philosophy with the spirituality of the Far East. The path passes through a number of temples and sanctuaries. It takes about 30 minutes to walk the path. The first temple encountered is Honen In. It warrants special attention. The temple is devoted to the monk Onen, who lived between the 12th and 13th centuries. He was the founder of the Pure Land sect. After having climbed, then crossed the threshold, the temple is seen standing amidst a garden that resembles the Garden of Eden. Honen had built his thatch hut here to teach his vision of Buddhism, redemption attained through songs of praise to Buddha. After his death, the site fell in ruins. Nearly 400 years later, another priest erected a temple on the same site to honor his memory. The moss garden and a pond heighten the atmosphere of silence. Stone statues watch over the site. A passage between two mounds of white sand served to purify visitors. Every two or three days, a monk comes to change the patterns of the sand, which may depict flowers or rivers. A beautiful garden conducive to meditation.
It is time to continue on the philosopher's path where other wonders await the visitor. Nanzenji is a Zen Buddhist temple. Established in 1921, it was first used as a secondary villa by Emperor Kameyama. Surrounded by greenery, it is considered today as one of the world's greatest Zen temples. It is one of the five great Zen temples of Kyoto. It shelters a school that seeks to find a balance between seated meditation and physical work. This temple is fascinating for all those who are interested in architecture. The details of the monuments are sublime. In Japan, sometimes you come face to face with something you would have never expected. Like here, among these temples that are over 800 years old. This aqueduct that could seem Roman and that was built in the 19th century. It supplies the city with mountain water. Further away, in another district of Kyoto, another temple also draws attention. Appropriately nestled in a vast green area, Kinkaku-ji, the Temple of the Golden Pavilion, was the residence of the Shogun in the 14th century. Facing the small lake, the pavilion is entirely covered in gold leaf. From an architectural point of view, it is a harmonious building. The ground floor is in the style of classic palaces. The first floor is in the style of samurai houses. And the second floor is in the style of Zen temples topped by a Chinese phoenix. Entirely rebuilt after numerous fires, it is now listed a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The garden, however, has preserved its original design. Small artificial islands dot the surface of the pond. Among the majestic trees and elegant bell towers a reminder that some of the Buddha's relics are jealously guarded here. The Buddhist temple Nina Ji has a majestic gate that is also guarded by the two kings who repel evil spirits. The temple was founded in 888 by Emperor Uda. Since that time, it was common practice that reigning emperors send one of their sons here to serve as a high priest. It is made up of many elegantly decorated buildings, like the Hall of Ceremonies, which hails from the Imperial Palace. It was dismounted and moved here in 1637. It's the oldest building on the site. Miedo is the hall where the founders of Nina Ji are worshipped. Its refinement displays how important this temple was to the emperors. Of course, a sumptuous five-story pagoda stands among the numerous buildings of the religious complex. Rising 36 meters high, it was rebuilt in 1644 after the devastating war of the 15th century, which reduced the capital to rubble. Within the park also stands a scripture house. This is where the teachings of the Buddha were archived in the form of sutras. His teachings migrated from China and Korea and were translated into Japanese on parchment scrolls. But it is time to discover another place of interest. Daitoku-ji is a complex that is made up of many secondary Zen temples. It is also called Dragon Treasure Mountain. 
Founded in 1319, it suffered serious damage, as did most buildings in Kyoto during the Onin War in the 15th century. The complex includes nearly two dozen sub-temples. It is one of the best sites in Japan to see a great variety of gardens and to discover Zen culture and architecture. After its reconstruction, the complex became a center of the tea ceremony. The most famous sub-temple at the religious complex is Daisen-in, which means Academy of the Great Hermit. Founded in 1509, it is one of the rare monuments in Kyoto which retained its original design. Still today, the temple is used as a site of prayer. It is said that the greatest philosopher and fencer of the 16th century learned swordsmanship, or the art of kendo, here. The temple includes five small extraordinary gardens that wrap around the buildings. They were all connected and tell the metaphorical story of the journey of life according to Buddhism. Its rock garden is considered as the best example of its kind. It contains a miniature landscape similar to a Chinese painting in three dimensions. Beyond the rocks and raked gravel includes prudent trees that represent the forest. Ryuanji, literally the Temple of the Dragon at Peace, is a true Zen monastery and not a former lordly residence converted into a temple. It was built in the 15th century and entirely rebuilt in the 16th. For many, the name of the temple evokes the famous stone garden, which is considered as one of the masterpieces of Japanese Zen culture. It falls within the category of the gardens of emptiness. With a surface area of around 200 square meters, it is surrounded by a small wall topped by a tile roof. Building on flat ground was a novelty at the time. Fifteen stones surrounded by moss are laid out in groups. The small number of stones is also a novelty in comparison with the other dry gardens of that period. And the stones were laid out in such a way that it is not possible to see all fifteen simultaneously, wherever one may stand. Other areas of the monastery were designed on the same principle, with a bed of fine kaolin gravel, harmoniously raked to symbolize the ocean. The rocks symbolize the mountains. Another interesting characteristic of the temple is the tsukubai, the basin of ablutions. Its square shape represents the mouth. Before the temple's buildings lies a pretty lake often eclipsed by the famous stone garden. Soken Inn is accessed through a magnificent wooden door. This temple was founded in 1583 after the destructive war by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, one of the three unifiers of Japan. This is the kingdom of what is now typical Japanese architecture, with sliding doors and tatamis in a very Zen atmosphere.
Between the pavilions, the greenery is perfectly tamed. A cemetery set apart contains many granite mausoleums. Some of them are modeled after small five-story stone pagodas, each story symbolizing an element and the whole topped by the sky. Another surprising temple at the complex is that which was founded by a chief of the Ottoman clan, converted to Christianity by the Jesuits in the 16th century. Its garden refers to an island in Taoist mythology, the famous Horizan. It's a long and narrow peninsula that juts out from the rough sea. It is prolonged by an isolated island. Here too, the tea ceremony had a mystical meaning. Originally, the path of tea had only one goal, to taste the most delicious tea possible. Little by little, it morphed from a simple pleasure to a ritual imbued with Zen spirit. The ceremony is organized on the religion's principles of austerity, which strongly influenced Japan. And herein lies the most interesting facet of the country, which was headed for a long time by bellicose military forces, but supervised by very tolerant and very peaceful philosophical religions. In the 17th century, the new shogun chose Edo, the former name of Tokyo, as the seat of his government. Kyoto then lost its position as the political and administrative center. Nevertheless, it remained the imperial capital of the country until the emperor's residence was moved in 1868, at the end of the last shogunate. Just like Nara, Kyoto has retained many traces of the former governing authorities, both imperial and religious, which testify today to the cultural splendor upon which contemporary Japan was built. Thank <laughs> you. 